Hi, dear friends. Today we'll talk about how to use your old laptop as a Wi Fi router, which will be able to share anonymous network using VPN, Tor, SSH, or SOX5, and configure the network according to your needs. Talking about a Wi Fi router, I mean that the device will work automatically after clicking the Start button. You'll be able to use both Wi Fi and Ethernet. But if you need to reconfigure the network, you'll have to change settings right in the laptop. For instance, to switch one SOX to another. If our usual Wi-Fi router is simple and works autonomously, this one is more complicated and has lots of different anonymous networks. That's why we need to change settings manually. In case of switching from one type of an anonymous network to another one, now I'll tell you what operation system you should use and how to configure the laptop as a router and your network. So guys, I've installed Windows 10 and switched off user account control and Windows Defender. It's antivirus. I also stopped automatic updates and turned off sleep mode to keep the computer from switching off. I set up RDP to configure the laptop route remotely. I installed NordVPN client in case we need VPN connection and share it using Wi-Fi hotspot. Installing NordVPN client is not obligatory. It's up to you to do it or not. So I opened WSSH Tunnel Manager. Here there are our initial settings. And my task is to turn our laptop into a Wi-Fi router. After that, we'll be able to connect to a network by one click and configure your anonymity. First of all, switch on Wi-Fi hotspot. Our Wi-Fi hotspot is active. You see the yellow icon. It means we can already find our Wi-Fi, but we can't use it. Let's go to Network and Sharing Center. Then change adapter settings. Here we see standard adapters. Ethernet is disabled. My Wi-Fi is our Wi-Fi hotspot. This one is my home network. And using the same network card, we'll share the anonymous internet. The network card can both receive and share the Internet we need. Now let's go to the options of Transmitter DHCP. All new connected devices will receive their own IPs with an increasing ending number 11, 12, 13, 14, etc.
Let's enable Socks on Gateway. You can learn what Socks on Gateway means from another video on my channel. As I have RDP, I need to enable it here too. Using Gateway IP and port 3389, I can connect to this computer remotely. The most important setting here is to enable the router. The program offers to install a virtual adapter. Agree to that. We see our Ethernet adapter selected. After that, we see a tip on how to create a bridge. In our case, we select Ethernet and Virtual Router, then right-click on them and choose Bridge Connection. Everything has been set up. We can check it in Network and Sharing Center. Here we see a bridge connection, which combines our adapters. To make our router auto-run at startup in Windows 10, click checkbox Auto-run and choose the type of protocol. It depends on what kind of network you've configured. You need to be aware that if you use VPN connection on your computer, you should also choose VPN here. The same works for the other types. I recommend to not change tap to tour or to run timeout. 60 seconds is the best option. We can leave the hotspot name as it is, but you can change it if you like. Click Auto Run Hotspot that makes our hotspot run automatically. Everything has been set up. Click Close. WSSH Tunnel Manager has been switched to the Wi Fi Router mode. We see that Open VPN is activated. I'll turn it off for now. If we go to settings, you'll see that almost everything is unavailable except the Ethernet router. That's all for Wi-Fi settings. I close the program now. You can see that the adapter is still active. We restart Windows. And after the reboot, our laptop will automatically switch to the Wi-Fi router mode.
I start the laptop, and after that everything should work as we've set up. So NordVPN automatically connects to the Netherlands. Wi-Fi hotspot is active. After a while, the adapter will be activated too. Then WSSH manager will start working. The adapter is active. Wi-Fi hotspot icon has become green. Now, this Wi-Fi hotspot is sharing our VPN connection. You can use both Ethernet and Wi-Fi connection. I'll show you how to connect your smartphone to this Wi-Fi hotspot. Here it is, our network Wi-Fi socks or however you name it. It's connected. Let's go to the browser. Let's update the page. So we see that we are in the Netherlands now. But DNS is China. Let's update once again. So we see the Netherlands as it should be. That's it. That's how your Wi-Fi router works. Now you can connect to it any device you need. I've shown how to use Wi-Fi connection. Now I'll show you how to use Ethernet connection. This laptop is disconnected from any network for now. I hope you see that there is no connection. Ethernet cable is disconnected. Let's connect it to our Wi-Fi laptop router. Let's check the connection. So our laptop is connected. Let's check the connection again. Open Hue.net. As you see, we are in the Netherlands now. What else can we do here?
If you need to connect several devices to the Ethernet, use Switch Hub. Connect Ethernet here and you'll have four or more additional ports. It depends on the Switch Hub you use. In theory, WSSH Manager can share up to 100 addresses. I'm not sure that the hard driver will work properly, but the software has such possibility. I've provided some examples on how to use this setup. For Wi-Fi, I used smartphone. The laptop was connected through the Ethernet. It's working on OpenVPN. But now I want to show you how to share socks, SSH or Tor network using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So turn off OpenVPN and then switch the slider to Tor. That is so simple. Now we are connected to Tor network. To connect SSH, disconnect from Tor and choose any host. Let's test some of them to find a live host. So this one is OK. Stop the test to not waste time. Right-click on the host. Here we see the only one option, Ethernet Router. It's hard to miss. Here we can opt for DNS. I prefer any of the Onion DNS to have an opportunity to open Tor links. As I'm also using VPN, I choose UDP DNS. UDP will be encrypted. Check all necessary hosts and click Run the Socks. So we're connected to SSH tunnel. OK, we have South Africa tunnel. After that, there is speed test. Do not be afraid of this speed number. By default, speed tests use a file that is too small to measure the speed correctly. That's it. Now we are sharing SSH tunnel. The last thing is to connect SOX5. I have shadow SOX on the port 10744. Let's go to the settings and switch to SOX. Click Close. The interface will also switch to SOX mode and will rewrite SOX port right here. Here is our SOX. To test it, click Test SOX. It's pretty good SOX. Good speed. Let's configure it as we did before. Onion DNS and UDP DNS. After that, click the checkbox and run SOX. We are connected.
There is a speed test ongoing and DNS servers are being set up. That's all. Everything is working. I won't show you how to use RDP. I think it's clear. Look, we have a problem here. The red cross means that DNS is not so good. We don't need to reconnect. Just click on the globe icon. Agree to delete if needed. So now it's working well. That's all for now. Bye.